All right, Captain Jack Sparrow. Let's, let's figure this one out. It says, Captain Jack Sparrow has managed to grab a root with his left hand and a rope connecting to the roasting pole with his right hand before plunging to his demise at the bottom of the ravine. One end of the roasting pole has caught on one side of the ravine so that the wall prevents motion both vertically and horizontally. The other end of the pole rests on the muddy bank at the top of the ravine's other side. Jack's right hand is pulling on the rope with the force given below. Based on the dimensions given, determine the force exerted on the pole by the muddy bank. Assume that the mud is so slippery that friction is insignificant and assume that the weight of the pole is insignificant. All right. So what should we do first? Okay, heard someone say FBD, right? This is almost always the answer, right? You, you probably want to start by figuring out a free body diagram. What should we do a free body diagram of? Okay, maybe the pole. I would agree that that's a good place to think about starting. Okay, and I'll do this little free body diagram right here. So there's the pole. Now what? I've isolated the body, made it free from all interacting bodies. So what do I do now? Okay, might want to start thinking about forces acting on it. So the first place I'll say to look in the problem statement, it says uh, right here, it says one end of the roasting pole has caught on one side of the ravine so that the wall prevents motion both vertically and horizontally. What do you think it's talking about right there? Right over here, this end of the pole probably acts like a pin, right? So we show two reactions right here, right? And I guess sometimes it makes things a little easier if you actually assign some letters. Let me call that point A. I'll call this point B and this point C over here. So let's call this uh, R A X and this R A Y. Okay. Cool. So we figured out one of our locations and kind of how we should represent it on the free body diagram. What do you think we should do next? Okay. Maybe we should think about point B. So let me show that right here. And what kind of force acts at point B? Got a tension coming from the rope that Jack Sparrow is holding on to. Okay, do I know anything about that? Yeah, so I do know the direction. Someone says the direction right here relative to vertical is this angle phi. So this is 12 degrees right here. Okay, do I know anything else about that force? All right, it says Jack's right hand is pulling on the rope with the force given below. So that's, this is his right hand right here because he's looking at us. So it gives us 160 pounds. Okay. Anything else that I know here? Okay. Angle. Okay, so we know the angle that this, uh, this whole pole kind of thing uh, is at relative to horizontal. So maybe I'll show that right over here. We'll say uh, 41.186 degrees. It's very specific. All right, what else do I know? Have we missed any forces? Let me ask that question. There's a force at point C. Force at point C, all right. So how does that work, the force at point C? So let me highlight another sentence right here. Assume that the mud 
is so slippery that friction is insignificant. So how do we how do we interpret that statement right there? It works just like a roller, right? In other words, it will prevent motion, you know, perpendicularly to the surface, right? But it will not prevent motion tangentially to that surface, right? So it works just like a roller at that at that point. It is going to apply a force that is perpendicular to the surface, right? Do I know the value of that force? Okay, I don't, let me just call it uh, R sub C, the reaction at C. All right, what else should I have on my free body diagram? Okay, it's a good idea to stick um, coordinate system on there, you know, a reference frame. What else? What about lengths? Would it be useful maybe to know how far it is from this point down to this point? Okay, if I'm going to try to do some sort of a sum of moments, for instance, around point A, not that I'm suggesting that that might be a thing that we do, but uh, if that's something we're going to need, then we're going to need to know how far it is from this line of action of force RC back to location A. Okay, do I know that length? Ten feet. Okay. Additionally, it might be helpful for me to know how far it is. I'm going to change the way this looks just a little bit. How far it is from point A horizontally to point B. Okay. And that's just going to be 2.4 feet. But what else might be helpful? Right, so it might also be helpful for me to know how far it is horizontally, and I'll just show that, uh, or excuse me, vertically. I'll show that over here. Right. From A up to point B. So how do I figure that out? Okay. So think about this. Look real carefully at this triangle right here. Okay. What we also know is that this angle over here is 41.186, right? That's, this, that's the same as this angle right here. So what I would say is that the tangent of that angle, tangent of uh, 41.186, Oh, C is already given, isn't it? Thank you. C is already given. I was uh, running with the information I had without noticing that C was already given. So what is C? This is a good time to emphasize the fact that you should read the whole problem and show you that I am also susceptible to not reading everything that I have. All right, well, that makes that easier than I was planning on it being. But even if you did just know the theta value right there, you could still find C if you knew B, okay? So that's, you know, maybe that's helpful to mention that. All right, what's next? Okay. Well, we know the vertical and horizontal distance from A to B, and so we're probably good because what we'll probably do is split that force into components, yeah. right? So what is it we're supposed to be trying to find? The force exerted on the pole by the muddy bank. What is that? 
RC. That's what we're trying to find here. I suggest that we basically do a sum of moments around point A to get that. Okay, I may as well lead with that, right? I have a clockwise moment that would be created by this R sub C pushing where it is. So I have minus RC, given that I'm taking counterclockwise to be positive, multiplied by 10 feet. Okay, I can do that because the line of action here is already perpendicular to that distance that I'm measuring of 10 feet. Okay, then what? I need to split my 160 pound force into components, right? So which component would you like to do first? Okay, how about vertical first? So we do the vertical component, it pulls downward over here to the left, which would create a counterclockwise rotation, all right? So we'll have a positive contribution from the vertical component of this force. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take that force of 160 pounds, multiply it by a trig function to get just that vertical component. What trig function should I multiply by? Yeah, it seems like cosine 12 works. Okay, cosine of 12 degrees because I need the adjacent component relative to where that 12 degree is measured. Okay, then I multiply by what? Right, so you take the horizontal component of length and you multiply it by the vertical component of force and that gets you that contribution of moment around point A. Then what? Now I need to do the X component of uh, the 160 pound force. That would be shown right up here, right? What direction does that tend to make it rotate? The X component of this force is going to have a tendency to try to make this thing rotate clockwise, right? And so I would subtract 160 pounds times, how do I get just the horizontal component? Multiply by the sine of 12 degrees because I need essentially the opposite component relative to where that angle is measured. I mean, you, you could, that would be another way to solve the problem. So the question was, could you use the 41 degree angle here? Another way to solve this problem would be to figure out the angle, I'll try to use a different color here, the angle between this force and the beam. And if you found that angle, you could figure out the component that was perpendicular to that beam and the component that was parallel with the beam. The perpendicular component would cause a moment and the parallel component would not around point A. So that would be another strategy of solving the problem, but I'm gonna continue with this one. Okay, so we basically take the horizontal component, multiply it by the vertical length distance, which is 2.1 feet. Okay. Do I have anything else I need to th think about as far as moments around point A? I think that's it. We're, we're neglecting self-weight, so we didn't put that on the free body diagram. Um, and so we're gonna call it good there. Um, so now what? We can just get RC by itself. Okay, we get RC by itself. Basically what that would look like is 160 pounds times the cosine of 12 degrees times 2.4 feet. Okay, minus 160 pounds times a sine, 12 degrees, times 2.1 feet. All this over 10 feet. Okay, so we can punch that in to the calculator. Okay, 160 times cosine 12, Make sure you're in degrees, by the way, or always check your, your uh, angle units is a good piece of advice. So 2.4 feet uh, minus 1.0 or 160 times sine 12 degrees times 2.1 and divide all this by 10. 30 point, 
uh, five eight or so units. Notice here, feet cancels feet. So what kind of units do I have left? Pounds, which is good because it's asking for a force. I wouldn't want that to end up in feet, okay? So 30.58, here we got 30.6 as one of the choices. All right.